So if you remember from the first video, we're trying to produce a 3D model of a yogurt pot that looks similar to the one you see here. So we've got our model to the point where we want to export it. We're happy with the rendering in Blender. We've checked the normals. We've set materials. We've got the necessary um, images required for our export. And I mentioned previously that there is a XAML exporter for Blender published on CodePlex, and by all means, that's one route you can take in order to, to do this. It happens not to be the route uh, I took. Instead, I used an inbuilt function in Blender to export, and in my case, I've selected the Wavefront OBJ format because I know that Expression Blend can import the Wavefront OBJ uh, format. So we'll just select that. It's called uh, yog2.obj. Click on export. I've already exported this before. Um, Deselect selection only. So I'm going to export the whole scene. Everything else I just leave as the default and click on export. So I've fired up my copy of Expression Blend. We'll just select new project, new WPF application. Let me just mark it so I can tidy up after myself. And OK that. And into our project, we're going to import some items so add existing item and then from our blender folder here first off we will import the result of my export and that's an obj file and an mtl file so the result of the blender export is this .obj.mtl file and also i need to bring in the image assets as well so the yogurt label.png and that's my caricature michael broad.jpg okay that brings them all into our project for us. And then on the OBJ file, we can either select insert, so right click and select insert, or we can just drag and drop that into the design surface. And you'll see that we have our 3D model. Of course, once you've got your model into blend, then you can manipulate it to your heart's content. Here we can see our scene consists of a viewport 3D. It's got a camera. It's got a world in that world there is an ambient light and directional light and our main object is this default group and if we just drill into that you can see the various different components of our group now notice that if we drill down into this material here which has got our image name on it michael broad so that's the um, the caricature image then just swap over into properties over here and select material. You'll be able to see the uh, specific material that's being used to paint that foil lid. Actually, the emissive material and the specular material are superfluous, but there's the diffuse material and there's the image brush that's being used to paint it. Similarly, for the yogurt label, the main label, again, if we select material, we can get rid of the emissive and the specular but you can see the image brush that's being used to paint that as well. That means it's very easy for us to take another image and just use that to paint the same uh, object. So let's just very quickly do that. Let's bring in another image. Let's have a picture of our cat. Oh, yeah, that's fine. And uh, it's probably not going to make for the most appealing yogurt flavor, but let's um, bring in Rory and convert him into a uh, brush resource like so then we can get rid of them again and back into properties into material select our diffuse material and I can pick Rory and there we can see Rory hard at work on our yogurt pot Let's put that back the way it was. And of course, you can do things like um, use the design surface to manipulate, make sure you have the whole object selected before you do that, to uh, manipulate your scene so you can move your 3D object around. You can scale it so we can go up, we can shrink it like so. And of course, you can add animations, uh, etc., in the normal fashion. So let's just Add in a storyboard and 
record at that point and then let's say in three seconds we just want to spin things around a little bit maybe to see the back of the object something like that and if we replay that animation you can see that's exactly what we'll get so if we save that just run our project So there we have it playing there. I just had to make an adjustment to the animation to delay things slightly as the window was appearing on my other monitor. But we can see that that, is, um, that animation is running. Now the last thing that uh, we saw was the ability for the user to pick this object up and manipulate it in 3D space. So you can just grab it with the mouse cursor and, uh, and move it around. Now fortunately, that's not a piece of code we have to write ourselves. There's a library on, again, on Codeplex, the 3D Tools library on Codeplex allows you to do this very easily. So if we just add a reference to this 3D Tools DLL, so download it from Codeplex, add a reference, and then we just need to go into the XAML and make a, a couple of changes. Now we could do that in um, Expression Blend. It's a little bit painful because it doesn't have IntelliSense. So instead, let's edit the project in Visual Studio and bring up window1.xaml which is already there. Let's go full screen. It will make our lives a little bit easier. So we've already got the reference added. Let's add in the necessary namespace. So XML namespace, let's call it uh, D3 equals and select the 3D tools in assembly. 3D tools, and then it should be a simple case of just going to our viewport and wrapping that viewport in a trackball decorator. And that trackball decorator imbues our viewport 3T with the ability for the user to navigate the object in 3D space. So paste that in there. Just build and make sure everything works, and I'll hit F5. And that animation will still run. But now I can grab a hold of this object, as you can see, with my mouse and move it around in 3D space. So there we go, we've gone from building our 3D model, breaking it up into separate components, applying materials to those components, including things like alpha transparency and applying uh, image brushes to those materials, exporting it into a format that we can then import using Expression Blend, bring it into WPF, have it nicely rendered in WPF, have it animated, and then finally, using the 3D tools components from the Codeplex, allow us to give the user the ability to move that object around and inspect that object in 3D space.